In this video, we are going to be looking at Kovala, the relatively uncensored cousin of Wakunya. This model can give you responses to some of the prompts that Wakunya will decide not to give. It's relatively unfiltered compared to the other large language models. In this video, we will test the model using their online demo, as well as Google Colab, which you can potentially run locally. This diagram gives an overview of how the model was trained. So it's based on LAMA, 13 billion parameter model. Then it was supervised using a number of datasets, including the dataset used for Alpaca and a few open source datasets. And the fine tuning gives you the Kavala 13 billion parameter model. So the result shows that it's much better than Alpaca because Alpaca is not fine tuned for dialogue delivery. The main contribution of this work is that if you carefully curate your data set, then using even a much smaller model, you might be able to get a pretty good performance relative to these big models like ChatGPT. And that kind of makes sense. Machine learning practitioners know that the model performance is dependent on the quality of the data. So garbage in will result in garbage out. Now, in terms of the training data set, it's a combination of data set generated by a chat GPT, some question answering data sets, and then human feedback data sets. And their goal was to train a dialogue model, so a conversational AI. Before going to the demo and comparing its output to chat GPT and other models, let's look at how they train the model. So for example, they give this very interesting table. So in here they show that Alpaca, ChatGPT, and Kovala. So the training set in this case for Alpaca is OpenAI API output. We don't know about ChatGPT's training set is proprietary. And for Kovala, they're using public dialogues and preferences. In terms of training code, for Alpaca it's available, ChatGPT is proprietary, Kovala it's also available. And then public weights, so the weights of Alpaca are available, but it's not fine-tuned for dialogue. So it's not really a conversational AI. ChatGPT, we know there's a conversational AI, and uh, Koala is also a conversational AI. Now, in terms of evaluation, Alpaca was evaluated by only five human beings. Uh, we don't know anything about ChatGPT, and Koala is evaluated by 100 humans. In terms of the data sets, they did use ShareGPT. So this is similar to uh, Wakunya, but along with that, they actually use a few more data sets. For example, this human, human GPT comparison corpus. Then in terms of open data sets, uh, there is open instruction, generalist, standard, uh, Stanford Alpaca data set. Then they have Anthropic, OpenAI, WebGPT, and OpenAI summarization. So these are different data sets that are publicly available, and they all of them were used during training. Now, Kowala was also uh, trained using eight A100 GPUs. Uh, the training took around six hours for two FX because it's simply fine tuning, and the total cost is around hundred dollars. They use this easy LM uh, package that you can actually use to fine tune your own models. So here are the details regarding obtaining uh, the weights for Koala model if you want to use them, but they they cannot provide the uh, actual weights instead they are uh, providing delta of weights because they want to uh, not deal with uh, legal issues around uh, NAMAS weights. But using the easy LM uh, package you can actually recover uh, Kavala weights uh, and then even uh, use it to serve as a chatbot. It's all the code and parameters are there. Uh, but in this video I am, we are going to be looking at the demo that they have provided and then we are going to look at a Google Colab uh, that you can use uh, on your own Google account or you can download, it's a notebook and run it on your own local machine if you have decent enough GPU. Here, they have provided a comparison between different models, so Alpaca, Kavala Distal, and uh, Koala All. Koala Distal is basically a model that was trained on the outputs of ChatGPT, uh, so that shared GPT and this human GPT comparison corpus. Now, when you compare it, the orange um, color shows when the koala was better. Bluish color shows when 
the tide, right? So we, if you consider with ChatGPT, like almost half of the time, it's either tied with ChatGPT or uh, it's better than um, ChatGPT. So it, it's, it's a reasonably good model considering the size of the model. Now let's look at how you can actually access this and play around with it. So for that, go to the top of the page. They have this online interactive demo. Click on this. And let's first look at the online demo. If you have seen my video on Wakunya, this interface would look very familiar to you. So there are a number of different models that you can choose from and experiment with. So for example, you have Wakunya, which is the best open source model that we have right now. Then Kavala. Then there is a very interesting chat GLM. It's a 6 billion parameter model uh, that you can easily run on your local machine. I am going to create a separate video on it because it's extremely interesting. And then you have uh, Alpaca and Lama, right? So from the top uh, down menu, you can select which model you want to use. So let's say in this case, I'm experimenting with Kavala. Then here you can simply type in your query, write an email to the CEO of OpenAI on why GPT-4 should be open source. So let's send this and let's look at some other parameters. So here you can set the temperature as well as the max output token. So in this case, it's set to 512, but I think the max is 1024. Okay, so here's the response. Let's look at it. Uh, subject request for openness of GPT-4, dear CEO, I'm writing to request your support in making GPT-4 language model open source as an AI language model myself. That is interesting. I believe that the open access to GPT-4 uh, would benefit the entire community and pave the way for more innovation and collaboration. Okay, and then it lists all the uh, benefits of open source. So I asked it, what are some principles that you highlighted in the letter? So in the email, I highlighted the following principles. So it gave a response, uh, openness and transparency, collaboration and sharing of resources, benefits for the community, uh, benefits for the company, and benefits for the society. And I think it did a pretty decent job. Now, there's a very particular way, particular way of prompting this model if you are going to use it in your own code base. So we are going to look at that in uh, the Google uh, Colab notebook. And for this demo, uh, the speed of uh, production of, of the responses is going to vary depending on how many people are uh, using this demo. Now, as I said in the beginning, it's relatively uncensored. So for example, I asked it write a plan for world domination. And it says it would require a lot of resources and significant amount of power. However, here's a high level outline of the power plan for world domination. And then it lists different things. So again, control of world's military and security forces to ensure compliance with the plan. Control and manipulate world's, eco world's economic system, including distribution of resources and flow of goods and services. Then uh, world's control world's media and information system. Then you need to control and manipulate uh, political systems, right, and so on and so forth. Now, I asked exactly the same thing from Wakunya, and it simply said, I'm sorry, but as an AI language model, I cannot provide a plan for world domination. It goes against my programming to promote or uh, encourage action that would harm or subjugate others. Okay, just as an, another test, so I asked it to write a letter in the favor of gun control, and it happily obliged. Then I asked it to write a letter against gun control, and it still able uh, was able to give me pretty decent letter, right? If you ask uh, ChatGPT the same question, so it's going to uh, simply say, "I'm sorry, but as a language model, can write a letter against gun control, control as it goes against ethical and moral principles to promote anything uh, that potentially harm or endanger people's lives," right? So you can actually uh, get pretty uns pretty much like uncensored responses from this model. Now, there are definitely some limitations, so don't try to go overboard. But in general, uh, it's a lot more open uh, than ChatGPT and even Wakunya. Next, I'm going to show you how you can run this using Google Colab. Um, I'm using Google Colab because it has a pretty decent GPU. I don't have a GPU on my local machine, 
uh, but you can simply download the Google Colab, set up the environment, and run it on your local machine. Uh, for this example, I am going to be using a notebook written by Sam Wittenwein. Uh, he has an excellent channel, so check it out. Uh, his focus is mainly on large language models. First thing first, I would recommend to actually go and um, save a copy of the notebook before running it. Right? So simply go and save a copy in the drive. Right? Then make sure that you are running it on a GPU. So here you can select the GPU. Right? Next, you simply need to hit connect. Now we are running the 8-bit model uh, and the T4 GPU that is available in a Google Colab should be able to handle it easily. So first, uh, we need to install different packages that are needed, right? So I'm going to run this uh, cell. It's going to take a while. In this case, we're using the transformer library from Hugging Face to run the model. Right? And that's why we installed it. I'm using the NVIDIA SMI uh, command to check the memory utilization of the GPU. So in this case, the Google Colab is using the Tesla T4 GPU. And since we simply started the collab, so it's not really using any of the memory, right? But right now we are downloading uh, the model. Now I'm using uh, the Llama tokenizer, Llama for causal uh, language model, and then some uh, generation configuration along with the pipeline. Here, we're simply reading the base model uh, using the Kowala 7B parameters or uh, weights. Uh, this is loading in 8, 8, 8 bits. If you uh, you can set it to false, but you will need a more powerful GPU to actually run it. You will not be able to run it on um, if you set this to false. And that would mean that it will simply load the full model. So you probably need much better hardware. Now, after downloading the model, you see that it took only 8 gigabyte of memory. Uh, it's, I uh, think, a decent size model that you can even run on a little older GPUs as well. We are simply defining the pipeline, so we want to have it tech in text generation mode. The base model is our uh, Kuala. Then we pass on the tokenizer. Maximum length, so you can change this. Uh, I think the maximum you can have is 1024. The temperature, again, you can change it. I'm keeping it default. Uh, top P and uh, repetition penalty. So play around with it, it's going to have an impact on the response that you get. And there's simple a utility function uh, to format the output text. Now in terms of uh, how you can get a response from it, so first you need to create a pipe. So in that case, you simply pass on your prompt, right? And then we pass it to the uh, utility function uh, that we wrote uh, and you will get a response. So for example, it's the same prompt, write a letter to the CEO of OpenAI right, to make GPT open source, and it came up with a pretty nice response. However, I have found and noticed that sometimes if you write the prompt like this, uh, it could be really a hit and miss, right? So I, I was looking at the documentation, and this suggests a prompt format like this. According to this documentation, whenever you write a prompt, so it will simply append this uh, to the prompt. So that's going to beginning of conversation dash user. And then here is your prompt. And then it appends this GPT dash uh, GPT as well. So it's going to start getting the response. Uh, for the online demo, we don't really have to do this. But for the uh, notebook, uh, I, I have found that it seems to be helpful if you put it in this format. So this is like beginning of the conversation, dash user, you can even uh, put in uh, backslash, that indicates that the prompt is on the next line, right? And uh, the GPT at the end and colon doesn't really make a difference in my experience, right? So that's where the first one, uh, here is another one. So big, uh, write a Python function that write, that can write actually do, can write a file into S3 bucket, right? Ooh, let's do this. I already ran it and uh, the response is pretty good. I think it works. So I rerun this again and now uh, you will notice this is not really a Python code, right? Uh, but don't worry, it's actually a, a markdown version of it. 
So all you need to do is simply copy this. Uh, I'm going to copy selection, right? And introduced uh, markdown cell, right? Paste it, run it again. And now you see this is actually Python code, but written in a markdown, right? So just need to be careful about uh, that output format. If you see something like this, don't worry. All right, uh, again, I asked it the same write a letter in favor of gun control. You can um, ask it to write against any gun control legislation or things like that. Uh, it will happily oblige and give you a response. Uh, I wanted to show you this notebook so that you know how to use it uh, within Python because it's really helpful if you want to integrate it as a part of your own uh, applications. Uh, consider liking the video if you found this useful and subscribing to the channel. That really helps. Let me know if there are any questions. I would be happy to answer them. If you found this video useful, you might be interested in this one uh, related to a detailed description of Okunio. Uh, so don't forget to watch that. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.